Hi, I'm Ernie Conover. Last issue, we talked all about grinding machines to sharpen your turning tools. This issue, we're going to continue that story and tell you how you can use all sorts of jigs to make that job easier and more assured, and how you can use a buffing machine to bring your spindle turning tools to razor edges. If you're unsure whether you have a high speed or a carbon steel tool, uh, it's very easy to spark test them. If we take this uh, high speed tool and we touch it to the grinder, we get a spark that's very dead. It looks like an orange ball of fire. If we take this old uh, chisel, which I've ground into a scraper, and it's made from carbon steel, uh, and touch it to the grinder, we get a very white spark that ends in a starburst. I always work with my gouge protruding, in fact all tools, protruding one and three quarter inches out of the face of the jig. Grasping the jig right here is the safest place. Don't hold it by the handle as you have no sense of feel back there. Right here, I have this hand on top of the other hand like so forms a triangle. You want to grind a little lighter as you go around the nose so that you don't shorten the nose. And there we are, ground to perfection. For the bowl gouge, we use the same inch and three quarter of protrusion, but we set this articulated arm to a slightly different angle, about five or ten degrees different. And now we simply move the rest to a new position. Right there I have a mark. And there I am. So, there we go. Again, we're going to lighten up the touch right there. And be a little more aggressive on the sides. Sharpening of scrapers is best done on a table rest. And uh, you just simply want to adjust it so that you're putting about a Oh, a 15 degree angle in this edge. It could be 20, it could be 10, it's not critical. But you just need some clearance in the edge. And we can very easily grind this scraper now by simply running it back and forth across the wheel like so. And that'll raise a very good burr on that edge. For a large dome scraper, we are better to burnish the edge with this burnishing uh, fixture from Veritas. We'll first grind the edge like so, and now we'll remove all traces of the ground burr with this oil stone. And we'll now go down on the fixture right here and simply kind of pushing pretty hard and levering off this fulcrum point like so. For this tool I have to do this upside down with a tool down. For many I can do it with the edge up, it really doesn't matter, but we are now rolled a superb burr on the edge of that. A great way to grind your roughing out gouge is with a platform rest like this. Now with many of the aftermarket uh, jigs for turning tools, you won't be able to get it within the eighth inch prescribed by OSHA, but these tools are so big with so much leverage that you can safely be a bit further. Uh, a great way to reverse engineer a grind that you know is working good is to simply uh, coat the edge with a black magic marker like so and then turn the wheel like so with your fingers and see if you're rubbing the uh, black off and you'll be able to see that you now have this set to the right angle and can proceed to grind your tool. I maintain the edge on my skew with either oil or water stones. But once in a while it'll play kissy face with a chuck or have a calamity with concrete and the edge needs to be reground. Now a skew needs to have a flat grind. It can't have a hollow grind and work well. And the only way I know to achieve that is with the side of the grinding wheel. I will never do it on a wheel that's uh, not at least an inch in width and this one's an inch and a quarter. And again, I don't push very hard. I make sure I have a safety glasses and a safety shield. And uh, done so, it is a safe practice. Now, uh, this will want to grind more at the top side than at the bottom. So you need to put a little more pressure at the bottom. And you just 
like that. For spindle turning tools, grinding isn't enough. We need to refine that ground edge to get a razor sharp polished edge. And the best way I've found to do that over the years is with a buffer. On the left side of this buffer I have a spiral sewn wheel which has either concentric or spirally sewn stitching that makes for a very hard resilient wheel. On that wheel I put a compound called Greaseless. Uh, this is a mixture of glue and emery. And with that I can now refine that ground edge by buffing. But now with buffing I'm always buffing off of the edge and I'm always holding that edge tangent to the wheel so that I drag off of the cutting edge. If I try to buff into the edge this gouge is going to fly back out of that wheel with dangerous consequences. On the right side of my buffer I have a cushion sewn wheel which has a much different kind of stitching that makes for a very soft wheel. On this side I put a compound called stainless steel compound. And again you just cram it on like so. And now I'll take and again buffing off of the edge. I'm just going to buff that edge up until it's nice and bright and it'll now take hair off of my arm. I find today that new tools fresh from the store are often heavily magnetized because magnetic chucks are used in the grinding of them. And so I will demagnetize new tools uh, with a uh, industrial demagnetizing machine.